Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. And today, uh, what I'm going to uh, talk about is the news is that, um, yeah, the first one is um, Apple's WWDC keynote he hints at the future of computing. Okay, so uh, this news is on sports.yahoo.com. And uh, uh, the news was written by Andriana Lee. And uh, yeah, let me summarize uh, the um, uh, kind of like the little bit of um, Apple's WWDC keynote, uh, the event. Pretty much they didn't really launch any new hardware. So this is the first. Uh, we all know that I would say the, the phone or smartphone is pretty much hit the, I would say the best, you know, highest quality and it's a little hard to you know to 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 break through these types of format it, i would say it's already hit the maximum of its you know capacity of of doing everything the best inside that small device so yeah so that's why i think um the max media might be really important because um yeah so form is you know it's kind of detach ourselves and then you know we it, it, it has its limitations. So yeah, so yeah, so pretty much um, they didn't really announce any new hardware, but they do have some interesting news, which is the first one is um, it's called photogrammetry. Photogrammetry. This one is pretty much if you go to Wikipedia or if you search the term, it's pretty much using 2D images and uh, build something you know like um, i would say build 3d or you know kind of like a, a switch between 3d and 2d so imagine you take a photo right a very high quality photo and this can turn it to 3d yeah that was you know save a lot of time to just build it right as we all know that building 3d object is uh, time consuming so by uh, taking photos videos or you know like some 2D images, it can make it uh, a 3D world or a 3D model. So yeah, so uh, developers simply take photos of an object using iPhone or iPad, uh, the latest model of which has Apple's more accurate laser-based LiDAR sensor built in. Uh, yeah, so, and uh, they can import the image of to software programs such as Cinema 4D to create the realistic 3D model. It's amazing that you, you you know you import a 2D and then you know you can export through a Cinema 4D and make it a 3D uh, object. So this is really easy for uh, you know developers or creators to create an immersive experience without you know spending another 10 years to master 3D. Yeah, so it's like a quick quick way. Yeah, so this is uh, what I consider to. Uh, to have a really good, um, you know, um, improvement or good technologies to uh, make um, AR and VR experience even better in iOS, and uh, yeah, so this is something that I think um, is, um, yeah, pretty good. Uh, yeah, um, I like to uh, talk more for this, and uh, also they they kind of you know, um, you know like. You, you can pretty much use FaceTime to call um, Android or Windows uh, using FaceTime calls, which is pretty cool. At least they are thinking about Android and Windows user. I think that's really considerate, right? Like nice of Apple to think of Android and uh, Windows users. Yeah, and then I think, yeah, the rest of it is pretty much, you can use your watch, you can use your iPad, pad iphone and mac you know <clears throat> i think they are trying to make the whole thing all their product become a system yeah cross platform and then yeah i just update actually my computer crashed uh yesterday so i have to reinstall everything and then i find out that by installing that i find out yeah because i have to update to the, the software right even though I don't really like to update any software. So I was forced, but yeah, once I update, I find out I can use my Apple Watch to unlock um, 
um, the at uh, my MacBook Pro, which is very cool because yeah, like right now it seems like everything, every device is is doing like one uh, ecosystem. I think Apple right now is doing that. Okay, so let's take a look at the second news. The second news is nine to five Mac. Yeah, if you are really into iOS or Mac, um, you know, Apple system, you might know this post usually kind of predict or like, a, um, you know, like a lot of um, Apple's next move or next product and next software. So I think, yeah, so this is kind of like a big side uh, for uh, iOS user. So they predict the um, Apple's AR headset will launch the second quarter of 2022. So pretty much, you know, right now, I think right now is second quarter. So yeah, so it's probably next year around right now. So you will pretty much see uh, Apple's AR glasses. So the thing, the first observation that the person see is that they find out that the the Apple supplier genius, which makes at iPhone's lenses. They are also make the lenses for uh, Apple's AR headset. So we can see that um, we predict that Apple will launch AR HMD device in 2022. The device will provide a video see-through AR experience. So the lens is also needed and uh, a genius is also a key supplier. Yeah, that's the first observation. And uh, yeah, so um, yeah, and the second one will be, um, they will start uh, create, collecting the uh, virtual and the reality. Like they will start collecting data from the environment and experience. So, you know, since they have, um, um, there will be as many as 15 cameras. <clears throat> yeah, it's just prediction, but, Imagine 15 cameras in one device <clears throat> and start tracking <clears throat> and taking the the um, the data from the world. How yeah, this is very this is a lot, right? So why are so many cameras required as well as collecting data from the outside world? Apple is expected to precisely track the user's eye movements. This will allow them to increase apparent rendering uh, fidelity by trying or only that the user is currently looking at. So pretty much there will be the, a lot of cameras looking outside and also looking inside to see how the user respond to it. So yeah, rather than the entire human field of view, the technique is called, uh, you know, kind of like trying to figure out your your expression or your eye movement. And um, Apple also has a pattern for, for the following one approach. Um, this pattern application is relation to video, videoing the entire experience, namely the real world environment overlaid with AR content. So pretty much they have another pattern uh, which uh, you can record everything with the AR overlay on it. So yeah, so I mean, to be honest with you, when I see this, I, I feel like those are pretty much accomplished by a lot of different devices. Uh, it's not really new, but I believe Apple, since they, they, they have a lot of budget and human brain, they can probably make a better experience than other, um, you know, AR glass. So yeah, we will see. And uh, yeah, and looking forward to the next year uh, to see the, the AR headset. Uh, and uh, the third news is <clears throat> um, jupitermag.com, jupitermag.com. <clears throat> and then the title is called Boys and Girls Clubs Launch VR Initiative. Uh, this news was written by Side Staff. Okay, Side Staff. Uh, and the subtitle is Children and Teens from Hob Sound to, um, you know, in Indian. Indian town can try out the new immersive workforce development program. Okay, so pretty much um, um, the it, it's from Bank of America. Uh, they they are kind of encouraging 
uh, developers to create the next uh, workforce or like the workforce immersive generation. Some programs to encourage, <coughs> um, yeah, like teams to start using it and start learning something such as, um, you know, like uh, support curriculum design program oversight and management. Yeah, so through this, they uh, the teams can start um, try out a new immersive work uh, workforce. So yeah, so I think this will help um, you know boys and girls. The boys and girls club of Martin County Grant is part of the uh, Bank of America Charitable Fund Foundation's national wild four year one billion pledge to help local nonprofit partners to address. Uh, econo economic and racial equality. So pretty much um, um, they are kind of sponsored like um, think $1 billion for four year round uh, to you know, help uh, the community, community build and also uh, racial equalities. So yeah, and boost the econ uh, econ economics. So I think those are really helpful for, you know, kids to kind of start learning and um, you know um, learning how workforce or like uh, using immersive way to learn things okay so the fourth one is called um yeah it's on arpost.co arpost.co and then the title is called the art of london Augmented gallery uses augmented reality to safely show art. And this news was written by John ja, Josh Han. Okay, so yeah, so it's on arpost.co. So what, what what's the whole thing about? Basically, they put a lot of QR code, but nicely, right? Like nicely and frame a lot of really cool QR code and then, you know, put it and then when people download the app, they can scan it. And once they scan it, like the, the QR code is pretty much spreading in the, uh, you know, uh, London, the wall, right? Because right now, because of the pandemic, the um, uh, pretty much the gallery needs to close down because the gallery is indoor, right? Now they are bringing the, um, um, the arts, the, the precious arts, right? Outdoor by scanning, using your phone, scanning the QR code, for example, like, oh, it's it's on the wall, um, you know, around the bank or on the corner, you know, once you walk around the London city in real world, like in reality, and you see a bunch of QR code, you can, you can scan. And by scanning, you can see the painting, right? Uh, it's kind of like uh, putting all the, all the art on the street so uh, people can start enjoying all those stuff and you can have you know someone read it for you right and uh, you can you know tap or something yeah and there will be some detail explanations yeah so for example like oh uh, if you see like Shakespeare's um, you know portrait and there will be some dots and you can you know some buttons you can click and there will be voice or text underneath and telling you like for example like this is believed to be a portrait of a poet and the playwriter William Shakespeare probably by the painter John Taylor around 1600 to 1610 and it's all on canvas so you can take a look of all the yeah not only the paintings on the wall of London Street, but also uh, you can uh, tap and listen to um, you know um, the details of the descriptions. So yeah, I personally really like the concept of putting the art outside, right? Because right now we have to, you know, pay, uh, pay, pay, pay the fee. I mean, pay the fee is fine, but um, going to the galleries, it, it's a little dangerous. I mean, if you are not fully vaccinated, it's very dangerous, right? And especially you see like there are a lot of different, um, you know, second wave, third wave in Asia. So I would say um, just stay at home for right now. I know American is going to open pretty soon, but still think that it's still safe to stay at home. And then you see, 
by going out, because going out, we can stay six feet of distance is instead of um, you know confining people inside like a small uh, gallery space. So yeah, I think this is kind of like, I, I truly believe that COVID is accelerate the digital transformation. So you see like before, yeah, people would like to go to the um, uh, place like um, gallery to enjoy the art. But right now people, because you cannot do that. So people start seeking and getting a better, better um, uh, you know, digital experience and still doing the same thing. I, I would say that AR, we are solving the problem that we couldn't really achieve during COVID time, right? So I really like the concept of it. So yeah. So yeah, thank you for joining me today. And uh, yeah, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye.